copy this morning. This is our segment where we talk to newsmakers and experts on issues that matter to us. We will discuss... Okay, well, there's a thing. The series of earthquakes that hit several areas across the globe over the weekend, and to help us make a sense of this natural phenomenon, we're joined this morning by Dr. Ma Mario Aurelio. Doc, good morning. Thanks for visiting. Good morning, Karen. Okay, Dr. Uh, Aurelio is an associate professor of the National Institute for Geological Sciences at the University of the Philippines in Diliman. And for our viewers, you can join our discussion. Send us your thoughts, questions through Twitter, and Facebook. Okay, Doc Aurelio, first and foremost, there have been 52 tsunami warnings in different nations and territories worldwide. How bad could the effect be after the 8.8 .8 quake in Chile? Yes, uh, Karen. First of all, I, I think I'd uh, better show this uh, um, animation because okay. it explains uh, very well how the waves traveled through the Pacific Ocean yes. right after the earthquake. Okay. So what you're looking at here is a uh, Sorry, a, Where is Chile there? Chile, Chile yeah, is uh, right. right on the, the lowermost uh, right corner. Okay. And then the waves you see there, it's a simulation. By the way, I have to credit the NOAA in uh, Seattle, uh -uh. which is the Tsunami Center uh, for Research. Okay. That you see here uh, the, the waves propagating towards the west, meaning to our left, uh -uh. into the entire Pacific Ocean. And those 52 countries you've been mentioning would be those countries that are around the Pacific and o Ocean and even beyond that, meaning into <laughs> the Antarctic and south of Australia and so on. So you see that the, the waves indeed traveled that far. That's about from Chile to the Philippines, it's about 16,000 kilometers in distance. And it can travel that far? Yes. 16,000 uh, 16, kilometers? 16,000 kilometers. Just like uh, traveling by plane, you know, okay. from, from uh, the Philippines to the West Coast in the U.S. and even farther than that. But fortunately, and this is what is uh, one good thing about what, it, what about the, the tsunami, although it was a very high magnitude earthquake, when the waves arrived in the western part of the Pacific, meaning the Philippines, uh, Japan, the waves have already been decreased in, in terms of their amplitude, what we mm -hmm. call the amplitude, the height. So that, uh, in fact, that by about 3 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday, Fivolks already lifted the, the warning on tsunami in the eastern coasts of the Philippines. Can you actually predict where the tsunami will hit if you follow the pattern of the wave movement? Yes, I think uh, this is one perhaps uh, good advance in tsunami studies that as you see here in this uh, simulation, we can approximately see where the, the big waves are going, in which direction and at what time they will arrive. I see. Okay. Now, nobody can predict an earthquake. Right. You know, that's been, that's been uh, clarified over, over and, over and over again. again. Yes. But Chile experienced an 8.8. .8. Is there any way to, to at least study if there will be aftershocks in, in areas nearby, in the same fault line? Well, in, in ch definitely in Chile, the, the magnitude 8.8 uh, .8 earthquake will still generate uh, aftershocks. In fact, if you go through the, if you uh, visit the websites of uh, many uh, earthquake research institutes, you would see that even up to today, yes. there are still aftershocks. Of course, the magnitudes have decreased significantly, mm -mm. and therefore, um, the um, if for example, if we are worried about the tsunami, then the tsunami um, risks would also be lower by then. But what makes this different? This is an 8.8 .8 magnitude quake. Yes. And to think in Phuket, Thailand, the tsunami literally swallowed the whole resort and most of the islands then. And yes. in Bali, in Aceh, there was also a major tsunami there. Yes. With, but the quake wasn't 8.8. .8. It wasn't that strong. No. Uh, but. Here, I'll better use this one because that's the earthquake in uh, Aceh in 2004. Yeah. So it's the same um, simulation. You see the colors, red would be the descending waves and then the blue would be the rising waves. And the earthquake occurred right on the northwestern coast of the major island of Indonesia. And you see Phuket there, um, yeah. marked uh, to the to right. The right. Yeah. And you see the waves in blue, those are the bigger waves. So oh. they arrived immediately in a few minutes, about 20, 30 minutes after the earthquake. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Phuket was one of the greatly devastated uh, mm -hmm. areas in, in, in Thailand then. Okay, it's, is it much difficult now given the fact that we have other factors like climate change? Um, well, climate change and uh, earthquakes, um, I really haven't heard really of uh, definitive studies that relate uh, the okay. two phenomena together. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, perhaps uh, there, there's some uh, link between them. Okay, but when was the last time that the Philippines really experienced a major tsunami? I mean, I was very surprised that in Aurora, no, it turns out 1735, there was actually a major tsunami where the Angara family was actually saved, only five families in the area. Was that the only one we've had? No, in, in the Philippines, the most recent big tsunami was in Cotabato. That's uh, to the south of Mindanao. Okay. That was in, I think, 1973. And there were thousands of deaths then. And it was due to this uh, movement of what is called as the Cotabato Trench that you see to the south here. Mm -hmm. uh, a similar structure as that of which uh, that caused the um, Chile earthquake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also a subduction zone, what we call a subduction Can zone. Can we actually mm -hmm. put that? So, for, for instance, in the, um, in the um, Chile earthquake, I think the, the maximum height that was observed onshore was about two and a half meters. Okay. So that's about uh, twice the height of a person. Mm -mm. In other words, uh, you simply have to go to a place where it is higher than Correct. that height. Correct. And, uh, of course, you have to have a leeway beyond that mm -mm. because the waves come... Uh, swooping down from the shores mm -hmm. with a certain velocity and therefore it's better to, to rise up the other, to higher So elevations. in terms of construction and infrastructure, mm. you think this would make a big difference? Because I went to Villa Fushi, it's one of the islands in the Maldives with mm. the UN um, mm. disaster response team just a few months ago mm. and that island was practically wiped out at one point and when they rebuilt it, they now put everyone on higher ground right. just what you said three yes. meters above sea level precisely yeah, yes. yeah. so we can do that yes. do you think that's precisely it's do? just a matter of really designing properly say a community a resort or yeah. whatever is uh, near the shore in order to avoid that distance and uh, the government through FIVOLS for instance is doing a lot of effort in making in informing the public mm -hmm. about this uh, necessary things that you have to adopt in order to make your place safe but what about a seawall there's a the sea will actually, um, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, Does it serve a purpose when it's a tsunami or not really? Generally, a seawall is uh, built um, for regular waves, okay. uh, meaning to control the waves from coming in and out, especially if you have a, a port or a yacht area. Mm -mm. But uh, for tsunami, I think the design will have to be uh, different. Okay. Meaning, uh, so, Dr. Aurelio, given the quake in Chile, which surprised everyone and shocked mm -hmm. the world at 8.8, .8, <laughs> Haiti was... What was the mag? Seven mag. Seven. Seven point zero, seven point two. Seven was already very strong. Yes. Eight point eight would be historically. Uh, in the Philippines, you mean? Uh, globally, well, is no. eight point eight so 8 far? Eight point eight is not. Uh, the strongest, it's 9.5, um, instrumentally recorded, meaning uh, when uh, the instruments were invented, that was the time when we were able to record instrumentally. And it was in Chile, yes. about 200 kilometers north of where it happened now, uh -huh. that a 9.5 earthquake uh, took place. Okay. So that's the record so far of instrumentally recorded uh, earthquakes. But, but is there some explanation why we are experiencing more earthquakes now with a stronger magnitude? I mean, coming from Haiti and now Chile. <laughs> Yes, I think, uh, well, again, uh, the Earth is dynamic, so uh, the plates are moving, um, the, the outer crust of the, mm -hmm. the Earth is uh, very dynamic, and therefore we should be expecting earthquakes every now and then. As to the magnitudes, well, uh, sometimes uh, they would be very strong, like mm -hmm. what happened in a span of three weeks, I guess, or okay. just over that. But um, maybe it will come down a little bit later. All right, very briefly before we end, Dr. Aurelio, lessons learned. Yes, um, well, um, there are plenty of lessons learned from what has happened in Haiti as well as here in uh, the recent in earthquake in Chile. Uh, first thing, uh, we have to understand the phenomenon, meaning the earthquakes. Second, their hazards. Okay. And thirdly, if we understand the phenomenon and the hazards they bring, then we will be able to know how to live with them. Exactly. Thank you very much. It looks like it's something we can avoid, so we might as well be right. prepared. Right. Thank exactly. you very much, Dr. Aurelio. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please ask coffee from them. Sure. Ask them for coffee. <laughs>